want to go back in time a little bit to February the 16th, 2006. I was 43 years old. I had two children, ages 12 and 7, one of whom was in a Cinderella costume, and $120, an empty refrigerator, and two months of outstanding mortgage payments. At that particular point in time, my marriage had fallen apart, and I was on my road to divorce. Now, I'm not here to talk about my divorce. I'm not here to talk about why my marriage failed. I am here to talk about where I found myself at that particular point and time. A divorce is a sea changing experience. And initially, I thought that I would come roaring back because I had graduated from Spelman College, I had graduated from law school, I had attended graduate school, I had all of the necessary professional and educational credentials to really put my life back together. So I jumped on my proverbial bike, started pedaling as fast and as furiously as I could towards what I believed would be a short journey um, towards building a new life for myself and for my children. But what I quickly realized was that I really had no sense of awareness of who I was at that time. I also could not hear my own inner voice. I, I had seem, seemingly lost touch with that. And what I did not know and understand was that I was in a valley. Valleys are often viewed with fear and trepidation. However, I would submit that a valley can come for different reasons and for different purposes. In this particular instance, the purpose of my valley was for healing. My valley, in terms of the way it would be physically described, was deep and it was wide. And it had, if you can imagine, a pottery barn, soup bowl, smooth sides. And the floor was littered with broken um, and winding paths. And the broken and winding paths symbolized the sense of brokenness that I had within myself. My valley had a long um, stream down the middle. Um, and what I tried to do was I tried to initially treat my valley like it was a NASCAR pit stop. Roll in, retool, gas up, keep going. But no, couldn't do it that way. I tried very hard to climb up my smooth um, walls, couldn't do it that way, but only to fall back down flat on my back. And what I realized was that the broken and winding paths that I saw contained the lessons that I needed to learn to move on to whatever it was that was destined for me. But first, I had to do the work. I had to be willing to allow myself to be pruned. I had to be willing to allow myself to have, have fear and anger and unforgiveness and anguish and bitterness removed. Because you see, I had started to wear those things. I had layers and layers and layers of all of those things that I wore like a comfortable coat. And they had to go because I couldn't keep carrying all of that. It kept me in bondage. And I also had to allow those things to be replaced with kindness and goodness and forbearance and for, with self-control. I had to allow those things to happen. And so in terms of what the work that I did in my sojourn there, I had to allow those things to be removed and they were surgically removed. And was it hard? Oh, yes, absolutely. Was it, it was difficult. Was it painful? Oh, yes, it was very painful. But it was very necessary. Why do I continue to talk about valley experiences? Why is that important? I talk about them for one primary reason. I believe that in life, we never learn lessons just for ourselves and for our own benefit. I learn them because I have a responsibility to pass those lessons along to someone else. I also learn them and, and talk about this as a means and a way of encouraging other people. You see, I do not believe that in life we get a free pass. If there is hard work to be done, if there's a lesson that's to be learned, it's only going to keep boomeranging back until you do the work. 
So the sooner you do it, the less of pruning has to happen, the less baggage that you have to carry, and the sooner you can walk in to whatever it is that is destined for you in freeness and in liberty.